Welcome to ashatech.com, your engineering sciences channel. In this video, we are going to discuss a question on uh, bearing selection processes. But one part of it says, outline the five properties of a good bearing material. Part B says, a line shaft A, B, C, D, E, 8 meters long and of diameter 8 millimeters carries three pulleys which transmit power to different destinations vertically where weight for each pulley is 5750 newtons inclusive of the belt tensions as shown below the shaft rotates at 2000 revolutions per minute and the machine operates for eight hours and above a day with a bearing life of 2000 hours factor of safety for rotating machines is given as 1.3 this is the arrangement of uh, pulleys mounted on the shaft that is rotating on bearings B and D. So this is the 5,750 five, newtons on each pulley and this includes the weight of the pulley and the tensions that are as a result of uh, the belt power transmission. Uh, then we have the distances A to B is 2 meters, B to C is 1.5 meters, uh, C to D is 3 meters, and D to E is 1.5 meters. In total, it should give you 8 meters. Now, B and D are bearings, then A, C, and E are pulleys, as already determined. Then you calculate the equivalent radiodynamic load for each bearing. And we are also required to calculate the bearing life in millions revolution, uh, a million revolutions. Then we also need to calculate the dynamic load carrying capacity for each bearing. And thereafter, we tabulate the bearing specifications. Without delaying, let's look at the solutions to this particular problem. Now, properties of a good material that can be used to manufacture a bearing. Now, a good bearing material should possess the following properties one is it should possess low coefficient of friction to help us reduce on the power losses due to friction and also to prevent generation of much heat during the process of rotation therefore a good material to manufacture a bearing should possess low coefficient of friction it should also provide a hard wear resistant surface with a tough core. It means that if this bearing material does not possess these properties, then remember there is rubbing against the surfaces of the races and also maybe on the retainers. So if it is not wear resistant, then it is going to fail faster and therefore uh, cause a downtime of that particular machine that is uh, transmitting power to somewhere else of course that involves rotation with this particular bearing so to avoid that you should make sure that the, uh, to manufacture a better bearing material uh, you should have that material that is hard and is wear resistant two i mean three it should also have high compressive strength remember there is there is always a, a, a force that tries to compress the the bearings themselves and therefore if we, the bearing material cannot withstand the compressive forces then it will not be a good material for bearings next is that we should do have that material having a high fatigue strength you know uh, there is always a fatigue generated within the bearing material during its life or service life and therefore uh, if not taken care of the fatigue itself will result into failure of the bearing component therefore the material should have a high fatigue strength for it to be used to manufacture a bearing then the bearing also should the bearing material should be able to bear shocks and vibrations since we experience lots of shocks and vibrations coming out of uh, different uh, and unprecedented processes that could arise during the life or the service of the bearing uh, it should also possess a high thermal conductivity to dissipate heat generated due to friction between the bearing and the rotating shaft 
This means uh, if it doesn't have a high thermal uh, conductivity, uh, it will not dissipate the heat and will retain this heat. Then at some magnitude, it can cause uh, melting of the component itself or cause a faster rate of wear of that particular uh, bearing. And therefore, it should have this high thermal conductivity. It should also be resistant to corrosion as we know that with the time and temperature, oil will react with the metal to become acidic, which will corrode the material of the bearing. However, using the right lubricant is critical to the life expectancy of all bearings. Then the material should also possess anti-seizure properties or anti-weld. Because when a, a bearing becomes seized, Usually the two metal surfaces that are in contact with one another become welded together. So this would occur especially in journal bearings with a boundary lubrication. Of course, you need to do better lubrication, but also if it doesn't have good bearing material, if it is a poor material, then uh, heat is generated during rotation around that bearing, especially on journal bearings where you have uh, the contact between the bearing itself, the, the surface, the surface and the, 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 the shaft itself. When these two heat up, they can uh, come into contact and be welded together. In other words, if the material is not, of, is not having this anti property, then it will be disastrous because at the moment you will have the two materials becoming stuck with each other or becoming welded with each other. So these are the properties of uh, materials that could be really preferred to be used in manufacturing bearings. Part B has a, a system that has a shaft, then pulleys, that are mounted the, on, on a shaft that is rotating on bearings A and B and with these distances. We are required to calculate the equivalent radio dynamic, the, the equivalent radio load uh, for each bearing. Now we need to determine uh, to all to understand what this term means, the equivalent dynamic bearing load. It is defined as a hypothetical load constant in magnitude and direction that acts radially on radio bearings and actually and centrically on thrust bearing or what we can call actual bearing. Now, actual bearing support axle loads and radio bearings support basically radio loads. Now, this is the formula that can be used an expression that can be used to determine the equivalent uh, dynamic uh, load carrying capacity of a bearing and is equal to XVFR plus YFA everything we need to multiply it by a load factor that is if it is provided for then X is the radio load factor and Y is the actual load or thrust load factor then V is the rotational factor which is equal to 1 for all bearings when the inner rest is rotational. Then FR is the radial load, FA is the actual load or thrust load. Then K is the factor of safety or the load factor in general that we are taking for this particular problem. Then in this problem we see that there is no actual load provided to us because what we only have is a pulleys mounted on a shaft that is rotating on bearings and we, we can see that the, sh the pulleys have only belt tensions and their weights. So the way the, those vertical loads will act radially on the bearings. Therefore the actual load or thrust load and the, therefore the actual load factor will equal to zero. Uh, v is equal to one since it is a, a bearing uh, when the inner shaft I mean in a race is rotating then X is equal to 1 for this particular case and the load factor in general that is given to us is 1.3 for rotating machines the equivalent road, uh, radio load uh, therefore acts on a bearing 
in this uh, particular problem it will be the reaction of forces that act respectively at the bearings so if we consider this uh, problem as a, a simply supported beam under point loads we will see if this is the axis of the shaft being acted on by the pulley weights and the, the tensions on the belts that is 570 newtons at this point at that point and at that point then we will experience the reactions that will be radio loads that will be felt at the bearings a and b therefore we'll have r a here and r b there so meaning that we can use equilibrium conditions uh, to calculate for any unknown reactions here so sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero since we do not have any forces in the horizontal direction then this will still be zero uh, sum of forces in the vertical direction it means upward forces are equal to downward forces since uh, we have r a and r b pointing vertically upward then we will have the, the the sum equivalent to 570 5750 plus 5750 plus 5750 which i've said it is 5750 times 3 giving us 7250 newtons and we can call that as our first equation then we also need to apply the sum of moments equation and this is going to give us clockwise moments equal to anticlockwise moments and the, we know the 570 on 5750 on this side is acting in anticlockwise direction together with rb is also acting its moment is in the anticlockwise direction whereas 5750 at this point 1.5 meters from a and the 5750 at 1.5 times 2 meters from A are going to act in a clockwise direction. That's why I have therefore 5750 times 2 plus 4.5 times RB equal to 5750 times 1.5 plus 5750 times 6 and RB is going to equal to 7027.78 newtons. Then R A will therefore equal to if I use equation one, use equation one. I will say R A is equal to seventeen two fifty minus seventy twenty seven point seven eight, and this is giving us one thousand two hundred twenty two point two two newtons. Okay. Therefore, if we apply the factor of safety. For rotating machines having been given that uh, it is 1.3 for us to get the equivalent uh, radio load at a which we are calling FRA is going to be 10 to 2.22 times 1.3 which gives us 13,288.89 newtons then if RB will be the rb times the the factor of safety and this will give us 7027.78 times 1.3 giving us 9136.114 newtons then we need to calculate for bearing life now the bearing life in a million revolutions is defined by l equal to 60 times n times rh divided by 10 power 6. six this n is the number of revolutions per minute rh is the number of uh, hours or the service life or the bearing life uh, in hours that he has been taken for at least 90 percent of a group of bearings These are for 90 percent of a group of bearings okay so if we look at it we find that um, we will have 60 times 2000 which is n and uh, we have also the bearing life as 2000 hours divided by 10 power 6 we will have 240 million revolutions then the dynamic load carrying capacity is for bearing a we can define it from 
FRA times L to power 1 over 2. If we have it as C, then it is always equal to P times L to power 1 out of 2. Whereby C is the dynamic load carrying capacity, P is the equivalent load carrying capacity of the bearing, and L is the number of hours or the service uh, the service uh, life of the bearing actually in million revolutions then two is a constant that it depends on whether the bearing is uh, having uh, is, is a ball bearing or is a roller bearing for this case uh, the roller bearing takes 10 two to equal to 10 out of 3 and the ball bearing is 2 equal to 3 in this case we are assuming a bearing that has balls and therefore it is going to be a ball bearing so if we consider for bearing a c a is equal to its equivalent radio load times the revol the million revolutions then this will be times 240 to power one out of three and this gives us a uh, c a equal to eight two 583.16 newtons. So that is the dynamic load carrying capacity of bearing A. Then for bearing B, also we will have it as CB equal to FRB times L at power 1 out of Q. Then CB will be 9136.114 times 240, which is the, the service life in a million revolutions power 1 out of 3 and CB will also give us 56776.06 newtons so those are the dynamic load carrying capacities of bearing A and B respectively so if we are to tabulate our results we need to know the diameter of uh, the inner diameter actually for bearings the inner diameter for a is 80 millimeters inner diameter for b is 80 millimeters also and the equivalent dynamic the equivalent radio load uh, is 13 to 88.89 newtons and for b is 9136.114 newtons then the dynamic load carrying capacity for A is 82583.16 newtons and for B is 56776.06 newtons. Thank you for watching and following us.